Rec, work, rec, 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 league podcast. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your family, tell your haters. Available on Anchor and Google Podcasts and Spotify, Radio Public, Pocket Cast, Breaker, and Stitcher. At Rec League Podcast on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. At Rec League Pod on Twitter. Episode 34 available now. Yo, whether you watching this from Facebook, Twitter, click the link in my Instagram or YouTube itself. What up, world? So I just watched The Photograph. It stars Issa Rae, Lakeith Stanfield, uh, Yolan Noel, Rob Morgan, Shantae Adams. I know I mispronounced that name. That's my bad. Uh, Lil Rel Howery, um, Tanya Paris. Uh, Kelvin Harrison Jr., Chelsea Peretti. It's directed by Stella Maggie. Maggie. I'm bad with names. That's on me. She directed everything, everything a couple years ago with uh with Re. What's her name? Re or Rue from the Hunger Games, where like she couldn't go outside, but she ended up in a romantic relationship with. Uh, I don't know, one of the kids from Jurassic World. I didn't see it. Um, if you want to get a shout out in my review of the Impractical Jokers movie, stay tuned to the end of the video to figure out how you can do that. You got Lakeith Stanfield. He is a journalist, and he's he's doing a story which leads him to New Orleans, Rob Morgan, which leads him back to New York where he's at. You know, his story gets him connected with Issa Rae, and they form a relationship, and it's basically, like, trying to figure out what what they mean to each other, but being honest, and, I don't know, not getting too close, but wanting to be close, and, you know, just the ups and downs of how vulnerable that that they're going to get. Where I'm at doesn't quite have the cultural makeup for this movie. I didn't even think my theater was going to get this movie because the cultural makeup isn't there. Like, that's the only way I know how to put it. Um, But I enjoyed this movie. Um, Like, Issa Rae and Lakeith Stanfield are are great together. Like, I enjoyed every scene with them in it together. It, just, it felt natural, like they had a natural chemistry, and like I'm not a huge Issa Rae fan. Like my homeboy tells me how good Insecure is. Maybe when HBO Max drops, I might binge it. But uh, Lakeith Stanfield, like just in the past like three or four months, man, Knives Out, Uncut Gems, The Photograph, he plays completely different characters, like in everything. And then you could throw it back to like Atlanta to uh, Get Out to um the girl in the spider's web like he has such a diverse filmography you know what i mean he's different in everything he's in and uh like but he's he's subdued and restrained and i don't know he he doesn't want to get like a thousand percent committed and she doesn't really either, but they just, they kind of like playing it by ear, hanging out and spending time together and don't want to feel, but can't help but feel. And that's the backbone of the movie. That's that's what I really enjoyed about the movie. Um, at times, it can be a slow burn. Like, I don't want to say it drags, but it can be a slow burn. And I hope that they weren't going for a plot twist or plot reveal, because as soon as... Lakeith Stanfield starts his story and what they were talking about like okay this is gonna come back around like in the first five minutes I was thinking oh this is gonna come back around and this is gonna be this and this is where this is going sure enough that's where it went and that's not that's not a knock like I don't care like if if I'm invested enough in the characters like I'm not gonna knock at like I don't know like a secret that wasn't like close enough to the chest Cause I mean, it's obvious. I think anybody that saw this movie like guessed it early. And then based on his story, we get like, we get a past story with care, like 
characters within his story, a younger version of them and their story, and basically how this whole thing comes around full circle. Because in the 80s, this was going on with these two characters. One of them went somewhere, which led to the whole romance in the first place. And, and that was cool. Like, I liked the dynamic of the younger characters, too. There's a, there's a character in this that is, like, hard and, I guess, distant emotionally. And that, like, is shared. That ends up being, like, a shared trait. And I don't know. I, I don't like characters like that who discourage happiness, I guess. At, at the end of the day, I like this. I didn't quite love it. The score, like the scores, all like like brass instruments and pianos. It's 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 jazz. Like there's a real jazzy score that I loved. Like the, the score and the soundtrack was very dope. And they have they have like a brief conversation about Kanye West that I feel like was plucked right out of my head because I, I felt it a thousand percent. So with all that being said, man, in my opinion, I will say that the photograph is almost dope. Have you seen the photograph? What you think about it, man? Positive, negative, somewhere in between. Let me know. Um, if you want that shout out in my Impractical Jokers review, how much will Sonic make opening weekend, man? Be the first, be the closest. Get your guesses in about noon central time Sunday. I recently posted a Sonic the Hedgehog movie review. Check that out. I have a Birds of Prey review that's up. And Impractical Jokers next weekend, The Invisible Man the week after, and then we're already going to be in month three of 2020, which kind of blows me away. Rec League Podcast, man, 34 episodes in the can. We talked about the DCEU in the last episode. We'll probably recap the Oscars on the next one, um, along with, I think, NBA All-Star Weekend. And then no music is coming out. So let's let's highlight an artist. I'll figure out which one. Um, like, subscribe, comment. Find me where you find me, man. Don't know where to find me. Watch these credits. Peace.